Hello, everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be here um, at the NSO US Developer Days to present on the newer technology topic for Crosswork Network Controller, that is the Automated Extensible uh, Service Assurance, on how we do the end-to-end -end service visibility. Um, I'm joined here uh, with me, uh, my colleague, Krishnan Trukonda, who is a principal TME for the Service Provider Network Automation Group, and myself, um, Sujay Mumsdi here. So first, to look at uh, what is the agenda for the session, we'll go over uh, the service health overview, um, look at what is a heuristics package and, and how it can be customized uh, for Brownfield VPN services. We also have a demo to, to show you in the session, followed by some resources and the key takeaways uh, from the session. So what is um, the requirements for the service health assurance? Um, well, we have seen in the industry wide, there has been so many silo tools available that an operator has to go through when a service is provisioned for VPN, attaching to traffic engineering, tunnels, um, and, and the connection details. But they are all decoupled or disintegrated a solution. So it really doesn't give that user level or experience to the operator to determine where his service is meeting the SLA or where it isn't. And hence the solution is to build um, a service centric approach level, which is to build from the code, the service knowledge that is available within the instance of a service and tie that to the intent or an SLA. It is basically to codify the, the network troubleshooting is to build where your issue has happened and, and what is, is, is occurring in the system. So the eventual outcome is that it helps to mitigate those issues faster and provide uh, a seamless user experience for enhancing the operator's uh, productivity. So what the functionality is about is to build on the VPN services or the provisioning aspects of a service from a service level oriented health report. That is aggregate all your endpoints, your network topologies, connection details into a VPN service level. Monitor those VPN service for every sub service level, like a CPU memory, link state information, your endpoint interfaces, cross connects, and, and the transport underlay for, for traffic engineering. Similarly, extending those assurance capabilities into IPSLA and Y1731 Y1731 based for layer two VPN service. Uh, there are feature, future items that are considered to add about segment routing performance measurement and the external probing via Exceedian. Um, similarly, for layer three VPN, there are connectivity metrics from BGP, BGP neighbor, uh, uh, neighbors, the uh, the color to the routes, uh, what is available as part of the service, interface operational state um, for those connectivity information. And all of this can be defined through rule-based monitoring, which are defined through your metrics, your, uh, your collection stats, and this whole aggregated data is available through your reporting dashboard, which all constitutes together to what is termed as a heuristics package. So what is a heuristics package, right? A heuristics package is the intent to telemetry, that is to do your build your configuration and go down into the telemetry level to collect stats from your device. Heuristics package match to a specific type, like in this case, it matches to a layer two VPN or a layer three VPN type of a service, but it also includes a subservice definition, that is a subservice focuses on the sub components of the network system. So in this case, if you see that from a, from a layer two VPN service, the BGP neighbor health is, is a subservice. The BGP next hop health is a neighbor service. Like you will have similar rules that we will see more in the upcoming uh, demo as to, as to what are all the subservices that are created. Then the corresponding expressions to the subservices, like what determines the, the state for BGP. In this case, if it is established, then it is, it is good. Uh, or if you have any other states, then it, it doesn't, adhere to, to the rules or, and you can define your expressions. And then finally, the metric state, which is through your um, subservice maps, which maps to your device specific metric and the Yang path, the SNMP object, 
and the CLI commands to precisely define where to find this, this state on the network. So the whole service intent is, is defined from your service level Yang model definition and up to building the subservice expressions and metric. From an NSO standpoint, uh, the service health uh, uses the get modifications reverse diff to identify what are the subservices, like for a layer two VPN, what are the nodes, uh, what are the EVI IDs, what are the traffic engineering rules, um, policies associated, and then building those corresponding metrics. Like you could build your metrics here for CPU memory latency or bandwidth requirements and define those through the device's gang paths that will collect through the telemetry collection and jobs from the device propagated all the way to the service. So this is an example where it says like how your assure a heuristics package builds that to an assurance graph. That is your NSO service uh, device configuration through reverse diff set finds out what is the intent from the service and creates your path reachability SLA, SLA which is through Y1731 probing from your expressions and then the VPWS control plane for health and, and the PSAP session health, uh, which are the services are along the layer two VPN service. And the subservice intent is, is defined for those corresponding services. But you'll be seeing all this in, in action um, uh, and I'll pass it over to Krishnan to take you from here on the CNC's demo for service health. So let's get started. So um, Sujay explained the, some of the basic concept behind our service health module. And what I'm going to do now is to um, cover um, an example of a VPN that is not from the uh, TSDN function pack that we ship. Um, just to recap, CNC ships with a function pack, code function pack that does segment routing, traffic engineering, and it also has samples for doing VPNs, right? And what we have done is we use those samples to validate uh, and prove out that uh, not only our visualization works, but also the service health portions work. In this case, um, what we did is to take a different uh, L3 VPN model and we actually showed that in yesterday's session, the session on uh, customization that uh, that takes a, um, an existing L3 VPN model and then integrates it with CNC so that we can get visualization. And then now in this session, we are going to actually take the same VPN and now try to uh, show how service health would work. So the service that we created through the uh, what we call as custom or brownfield NSO function pack, mainly because it's not from the CNC sample, right? It's a it's a totally different one. Uh, the idea being that if you already have uh, L3 VPN services deployed with your own implementations, you can actually still uh, integrate with CNC and get not only the visualization, um, which uh, you know there are steps to do for, and we covered that in the other session. And in this session, we'll also show that you can actually do service health, right? So the starting point is that the Volvo uh, is a demo L3 VPN. That's the type of service we, we are creating. And you can see that it has um, you know three sides and then the visualization uh, is working. And for the visualization, we had to do some steps to actually um, on, the, uh, on the active topology component to also build a model that corresponds to the NSO service model. So in terms of uh, service assurance, what are the main benefits? Like Sujay mentioned, right? So now you got uh, a set of rules that takes any type of service and calculates the, uh, what we call as assurance graph. It's basically a dependency graph of the things that actually feed into the health, right? So this is a L3 VPN and it can have any number of uh, KPIs or things that you would like to check at uh, different sites, right? And this is a three-site VPN. So in this example, we just took one exact item to check. And all those three are green, so the service is healthy, right? So that's what the visualization tells uh, in the dashboard. Good, right? Um, so how does it know what to check? That's the portion with the heuristic package, and we will go through in, uh, in a lot of detail, right? Um, so 
just to compare, we have uh, out of box a few samples like the L3 VPN sample and then the um, L2 VPN sample that also uh, can be uh, looked at. So let's go ahead and open and see a few uh, few of those. Right, what we are going to do in this uh, extension exercise is to take the sample um, heuristic package and then adapt it to work with our model. Right, so let's take a quick look at the L3 VPN. Um, a sample function pack uh, based uh, assurance graph. So as you can see, there are quite a number of things here. Let me make it slightly bigger. Uh, and then you will see that uh, we have um, uh, KPIs that we check at every site, and there are three sites, so you'll see three of everything. Uh, PEC, route health, whether the BGP neighbor to the CE is correct, uh, up or not, the PEC interface. BGP neighbor health, this is the VPN V4 session indoor inside. If you're going to bind, uh, in this case, we are binding to ODN policies, so we can check the PSAP session on all the nodes and uh, and so on. And then you also have um, VRF reachability. In this VRF, do we see routes from other verbs? So those kind of checks. So they're easily understandable by network engineers, right? And these are not complicated checks. These are simple checks that you want to have running all the time, right? Um, and and basically you get benefit of this um, this um, you know so that you, you can see for example these are symptoms that we are seeing in that uh, you know uh, the BGP sessions to C's are not up and you get nice useful healthy uh, helpful messages uh, about things that are not good that uh, you know operations team can go and look right very quickly and resolve the situation. There's a lot of helpful information here. Now the key thing is that the type of checks that are done are automated meaning you. You set the rules, and then based on the configuration of every VPN, those rules will translate to, to these kind of checks. Um, those rules are very highly customizable. That's what we're going to see in this session. And then you get a good, nice uh, one dashboard view of not only your provisioning uh, services, but you also can look at this one is green, that one's red, and that's what needs attention, right? That's the intent. Now let's get into the rules. So the rules are actually, um, we call them heuristic packages, mainly because it's basically a capture of networking knowledge um, and codified into this, uh, these files, right? So you find them under administration heuristic packages. The intent is that these will be extended, just like the VPNs can be very different and uh, varied. Uh, so the intent is that you will also, um, you know, uh, do a mirror change on this side also. So with the system, we ship a bunch of uh, rules uh, and uh, you know subservices. Basically, each rule is basically saying, for this type of VPN, this is the kind of things to check, and the things are basically what are called subservices. So it's a collection of checks, if you will, and it also feeds those subservices with the data items they need. Right? For example, if you're checking EBGP uh, neighbor session, you need to know. Uh, which device, which verf, uh, and then you know what is the neighbor IP uh, for checking the session state. So all of that is collected from the rules by querying NSO, so configuration DB, and then using the rules to calculate the uh, exact way of checking the session, um, and that actually is defined in metrics, right? So there's basically three layers here. Um, the first layer maps um, the config items into uh, you know, inputs for checking uh, different things. The check itself is a collection of logic, meaning, you know, uh, if uh, we are checking number of routes to be more than zero, that's what is specified here. But how do you get the number of routes is coming from metrics. This is the actual um, interface to the device where we will actually connect and get the information from devices. So now let's look at um, how we can customize it. So you go to system and you do export, right? So this is when you export it, you click export, you get a file. So you'll see a file of this sort. And let's go ahead and um, look at it. So what I've done is I have already downloaded this file. This is a file that uh, a lot of the developers will be looking at and adding to and extending, right? So if you look at what is inside the file, you will see that um, it's actually uh, consists of a bunch of directories and it mirrors what you see on the UI. By the way, you can see all of this in the UI as well um, by clicking on this I, right? So let's look at L3 VPN NM. Um, so you see, you know, a bunch of, uh, it, we use JSON formatting and most of it can be done just by specific, using this notation. Um, there may be some coding needed. We use Python for that, for any complicated uh, manipulation of config DB to determine some of the um, inputs to input parameters to checks. 
so we do have that facility as well. Not everything is possible, in, you know, through XPath, or it's just too complicated XPath. You may want to write Python code instead. So we we support that too. Um, so let's go back to this uh, this folder. So here are the, all the system ones, and what you do is you basically start off by making a directory custom, and you copy over the files that you want. So in this case, the intent is to create a rule to match our, uh, our um, non-TSD and function pack VPN model. So let's look at what's inside this rule, and let's look at basic. So basic, the different basic and, and non-basic, we advanced, uh, is that basic is usually one KPI per site. So you know it, it's basically limited, but it, it can scale a lot, right? What you put in basic is up to you, but in this case, uh, for this example, we are going to ch check the PEC route health. Um, and you can see here that uh, you have rule L3VPN demo basic, um, and then the namespace is kind of important, uh, but there are only two, right? One is what is out of the box called system, and what you're going to add to it, which is always called custom, right? So, so that if you have the same name in two places, then we know uh, the custom always overrides the system, right? Um, when we actually enable uh, service health monitoring. It actually goes and checks uh, whether it's a you know a match expression to determine what class of service it is, and that basically tells it that it's an L3VPN of uh, you know this type, right? So this is a match expression. In our case, it's an XPath query, and that tells it that this um, this rule applies to this particular VPN. And then here's the dependency. In this case, as I said earlier, it's just exactly one dependency, and it's PEC route health. And we are actually going to use whatever is in the system space, right? This is a pre-built check that we can reuse. All we need to do is pass the device on WERF, right? Of course, the device on WERF for our model is at a different XPath locations than what is out of the box. And you can see those uh, we have created here, right? Um, to do um, this part of it, what typically we do is we go to the to the NSO, right? And then we, we can get the uh, display XML. So here's the XML. And basically, we're going to run expats against this payload, right? The sample that ships with the product does it on the L3 network model IETF based one that is in our sample. Um, so what you would do is you would run it against your model, your implementation of this service. Um, and typically, there are lots of open source uh, expat uh, query things. And so, for example, you know, I've just used this one here, and I've just loaded it here, and then I can try out, you know, for example, name of the WERF, it, it does a match, right? If I want to get the names of PE devices, I can, uh, you can, I can type that in and then run evaluate expat. It'll find all the PEs participating in that particular L3 VPN, right? And these are the kind of things that are needed in the, um, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, in the parameters, right? So, for example, we are going to do a PC check, um, health check. So, we need to know all the PEs participating. That's a device. So, you can see that we have the extract value. The extract method is going to be XPath, and the extract value is going to be you know the endpoint P device, which happens to be where in this model the P names are living. And then the VRF names we're going to put it same as because th that's how this model does it uh, to same as the uh, VPN name. And that's it. So we got one one service covered, uh, one subservice covered, and then the other one, which we always do, is the the, uh, the router CPU and memory. And so we need to know just the router names, and then again the same endpoint P device, right? So this is what this rule does: is that if the type of VPN matches this, uh, you know, this this uh, expression here on NSO, then we can actually run this, uh, go and get these things and push it off to the subservice. So now let's just for completion go look at the subservice, which we didn't create a new one, by the way, it's also super easy to create. We will uh, do uh, further on, you know, videos of how to do that, but let's go and look at the uh, specific uh, one in this case, which is um, uh, PEC route health. So subservice uh, CEPE route health. And in this, you will see that it takes two inputs. It needs to know the device on WERF. It doesn't care how you got it. That's the part with the expat and the rules that you will develop. And then once you push it to this, it's going to run a logical expression called connected routes healthy, Boolean true means good, and it's actually going to add, add it with the local routes healthy, right? That um, you know Unicode uh, escaped characters are basically ampersand. Um, and then the expression of where, how do you calculate connected routes healthy comes from here, right? If connected routes healthy depends on another bit of information called connected routes, 
and it needs to be greater than zero, right? So we'll document all of this in a lot of detail in our developer guides, um, and uh, you know that'll be super healthy. But you can see that uh, um, that it's it's very easy low code scenario, right? Now. Connected routes in itself comes from another bit of information, and you scroll down, you'll see that connected routes. At some point, it becomes an atomic information that you have to get it from the router, right? That's a dependency type metric, right? So that means now this information, you have to actually have to go to the router. And how to go get this information router is defined in yet another file called metric files, right? Metric route worth connected. So let's go and look at that. So at that point, uh, you know, it becomes very device uh, specific. Metric VRF. Um, so this would be um, route worth connected. So if you open this one, uh, you can see here that it takes two inputs, device and worth name, and then for every type of device we are managing through CNC, and we can manage different vendors, here's where you do the translation, how to get this bit of information from that vendor's router, right? So we have, for each type of router blocks, you can have an implementation to get it of iOS XE, you can have an implementation to get an XR, which is the only thing we have populated at this point. Um, and then there are, uh, in general, three ways of getting information out, CLI, SNMP or GNMI, you know, using a, a, either a native model or an open config model. So this is an example of using GNMI with uh, Cisco's uh, native model, right? So you, to get the number of connected routes in a WERF, this is how the YANG path looks like, right? And then there are two different uh, YANG paths. It's sensor path that you actually go and ask the router, which is the second one. And then you apply some filters to pull out the information that you need in your um, in your logic, right? Which is just the route count on that WERF. Um, in some cases, we can do very granular uh, queries on the routers. In other cases, it cannot be done. So that's um, uh, the, so that we have we have those two uh, those two. So that's uh, in summary how this works. Um, so in, uh, after all of this is done, you would come back to CNC, you would go ahead and import it here, and you would see the things that we fed in uh, here. We didn't create any subservice or metric because we used all the system ones. We have the config pro profiles. Uh, we, need, uh, we need a matching config profile. Uh, these are basically some thresholds for some KPIs um, that you, you can use. Typically, these are used with... Uh, you know, jitter, delay, packet loss kind of thresholds. Um, and these are more useful in L2 VPN in this particular release where we do check with Y1731. In the next release, we are going to do data path checking using segment routing performance measurement, as well as in future, we are going to add external uh, synthetic data monitoring using external probes. So all of that's coming. So in summary, um, it's very easy um, to write rules to, uh, to make uh, a matching um, service health for a very flexible VPN that you're deploying, different from anybody else. You can always add uh, to the heuristic package. You see the service um, health uh, quickly in the nice dashboard uh, where you also see the visualization and where you're configuring. Um, and uh, all of this is automated. That is, you write the rules once and every VPN will benefit from this. Um, with that, um, I would uh, conclude in the slides, there are references for your information and please uh, reach out to us for any questions. Thanks, uh, Krishnan, for the wonderful demo. It was uh, really detailed and, and good to see all the customizations available. So uh, as, as Krishnan mentioned, um, for the key takeaways with uh, Crosswork Service Health, which is available in the CNC 4.1 as a GA release, it is really the capabilities uh, from an automated assurance perspective that's available for VPN services. And it can be customized and extensible, as Krishna mentioned, um, for various types of use cases. As we allow provisioning to be extended, we could modify and extend those service assurance capabilities. And um, a nice view of the dashboards, all holistic, coming together on, on the CNC UI to look at the state of service from provisioning uh, to monitoring. Uh, so we do have uh, those references here in these links. Uh, please feel free to take a look and, and reach out to us on this alias if you have uh, any further questions. All right. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to this uh, session. You all have a good day. Thank you.